Yet again, it's another new year and I am here to make more dresses because I don't have enough or something. I don't know. Hi, it's me, Joseph Crupper slash Kelly G. Uh, you can call me either. My hair is doing something. It's a vibe. I am going to be making another dress. So here's the plan. Right now we're planning our reading time to be in person. We'll see how that goes. I'm not gonna put too much stock in it because I don't know how the world is gonna go day by day. That's all I've learned. But here we are. I have finally been in my basement doing things, getting things put away, putting things places, taking things out of boxes, etc. And I'm pretty sure I emptied out every stitch of fabric that could be put away I wasn't currently using. I got it and put it in a in a nice I feel like I just should call it a filed container. Like all of my fabric's been filed away. It's all sorted by color, patterns, etc. I have been needing to use some of that fabric. So that's what we're gonna do with this dress. For the reading time that we're doing this month, it is going to be, it's called, oops, all drag queens. So I really want to do a drag inspired drag outfit. <laughs> I'm kind of aiming for something along the lines of a Priscilla Queen of the Desert fantasy, but I'm not gonna be making those like big pants, bell bottom pants or anything like that. However, I do want to emulate a, like a headpiece, like a flower headpiece that they have in those shows. And you, uh, here's a picture. Um, I have lots of flowers left over from uh, an attempt to make several flower dresses. now. You know that I am a flower dress enthusiast. You, one of my favorite outfits is this red and purple flower fantasy. I made it because it just was something that was in my head. I needed to get it out and I did. And then I started wearing it all the time. It was the first outfit that I ever wore for a reading time. And it was really nice. You can see a picture over here. Beautiful. I've had art made out of it. With um, You can buy art with this dress <laughs> design on it by my good friend Kai. Uh, on the Redbubble store for a reading time. So go check that out. I made a similar dress out of yellow and green flowers. I also made two other dresses that were, I think red and orange and then yeah, purple and blue for Anorexia and Spike Nagahide quite a few years ago for a pride show. Um, it was more expensive than I think that they thought it was gonna be. So I haven't been asked to make any more new outfits. Anyways, um, I have leftover flowers from that project that I bought with my own money and then just ended up not having a use for. Huh? Um, and that's what I'm gonna be making all the flower stuff out of. So I, I need to figure out how first, how big I want my outfit or like my headpiece to be. Usually I make these out of something that I buy from the dollar store. It's like a towel headpiece. It's like, a, it's like a thing you put on your head to dry your hair. It's really ineffective, but if I hot glue it a certain way, it becomes a very light headpiece base. What I'll do is I'll take some foam, some like, like cushion foam and put it here and then I'll cover it in flowers and that's the headpiece. It's a lot of hot glue and desperation. And I like it. I don't know how, much, how big I can make it. I have all this fabric, like I said, that I would like to use. And while I was going through the fabric and I had this idea in my head, I was like, how can I make a dress with stuff I already have, incorporating the flower somehow. Came across the stuff that I remember getting. It's like this green, you can kind of, you might be able to see it's a little sparkly, very see-through. I think I got it from like a bazaar that I went to in Corvallis a couple years ago. So that was interesting. I was probably like dirt cheap. I, I bought it. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but here, here we are. It's just, there's a lot. I want to see if I can make a dress out of it and kind of incorporate the flowers. Like, I don't want it to be covered in flowers, but like, you know, have it kind of flow down and be like trimmed maybe with the flowers, like a whole fantasy. It reminds me of fabrics that I will go to Joanne and see that have um, embroidery on it already. I don't have any ability to do embroidery anything, so that's not happening. I've also, 
for Christmas gotten a serger. So I'm gonna see about using that for some of this business. This is a pattern I used many years ago. I made a, a dress for Halloween with it with my friend, well, my friend Joey mostly made it because I was inept <laughs> at sewing, but I kept I kept the, the pattern. I like the straps and stuff. I don't want to do a sleeve. I feel like I've been doing like lots of sleeves, lots of poofy sleeves. I want to like move away from that. I want it to feel very like flower up on top and then like slim stem down the bottom, but I don't want it to be like a body tight dress. I feel like if I do this type of a, a bodice, it'll have enough like of a cinch right there. And then, you know, I can do something fun with the bottom, with the, the flower. I'm looking at how this pattern is shaped together and it looks like there's a panel here. And I'm thinking if I just extend the panel, I can like ruche it up or create pleats or something, gather it so that it gives some extra dimension in the front and still maintain the shape when it is sewed to a lining. So that's the plan. We're gonna see how it goes. I'm excited. I have, I have time. Today's January 23rd and the program's not until February 19th. So I have a few weekends. I have stuff going on, but you know, if I work on this bit by bit, we should be fine. To show you how, hi, to show you how committed, hold on, sorry. To show you how committed I am to making sure that I am using stuff that I am not buying, here is me pinning the front bodice lining piece onto a bed sheet that I cut the middle out of. I'm pretty sure I used this to make masks. There is still elastic down here. This is like a, a fitted sheet. It's really interesting. So you can watch me cut that out. So I cut out the back and the front with some fabric that I had from that bed sheet. Um, and I don't have really any left now. I have like a small square that I saved. There is not a skirt lining called for, for this dress. However, because of how sheer that green fabric is, I feel like it'd be prudent to have one. So I need to put some kind of layers there. If, and I thought doing a white lining layer underneath, like an underskirt. I don't have a piece of fabric that I found in all the fabric I have down there that is wide enough to fit this and also hasn't doesn't have holes in it. So here is the skirt piece. You're supposed to cut two of these on the fold. And so I have this fabric here. Someone gave me, um, and I was using for masks again. And I was like, maybe I could cut it out of this, but it has to be cut on the fold. And this, there's like tears all over it. And here's a part where I had cut out a bodice, my trash dress. I had cut out a bodice piece out of this part. And um, yeah, I I don't know why I folded it up when there, it was so clearly incomplete. So really I'm just frustrating myself. I have no one to blame except for myself. Oh my gosh, I look crazy! I can't believe I look like this during church! Say hey, Colter. Hi. <laughs> so I haven't really worked on this very diligently this last week, but I have been compiling things. Um, this is a pair of long johns that's unrelated. I have some patch jobs I also need to get working on. But um, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that one of the things that I'm working on for like the main crux of the outfit is this headpiece. And I have been dreaming up, really taking some time on this and shaping it to be exactly what I want instead of just like throwing some flowers on the headpiece and calling it good. So I'll show you what my method is. I buy these little like hair wraps from the dollar store and you can see you're, <laughs> they're not good <laughs> for anyone with any kind of hair. Like me, it, this wouldn't work for me, I don't think. But you know, you're, it, the point of it is it's supposed to fit your head tightly. So what I do is put this on, I, I usually take this, this button off 
tie it around and then like glue it down so it like fits my head perfectly. And that's different than you would have seen me do the flamingo head piece where it was all duct tape and it was a bunch of like putting wires and stuff and making it. I like this method for these types of head pieces because they're very light and it's just a lot of glue. Last time I made these, I used um, foam to pad out. I, I made one with like some buns here. I made one that was trying to be like a Marge Simpson. It kind of got a little floppy and I don't know if that worked out the way that I wanted to. And then I made one that kind of had like a swoop, swoopy thing. The problem with these is when you use the foam, when you start putting flowers on it, it sometimes loses the the form and the, the, the shape that you're wanting to do um, can be lost in translation because you're covering it with a di different texture. So that's the challenge that I'm having to deal with. I'm probably gonna have to go get more because I kind of want to do a really big shape. I made a, oh, you know, I made a different outfit. I also made a, a headpiece out of one of these and some like loofahs. That was fun. I only wore that once and then I gave it away. You feel confident. Mm. You feel like your mother would appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna glue my head down. Okay. I don't know where I'm gluing. Oh my God. <laughs> This is such a bad thing. Terrifying. It's so scary. Where did I put the glue? Okay. I don't think that's gonna do a goddamn thing. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> that fucking burned me so! <laughs> hey kids. Now, this would be the time that you would think, oh, she surely decided to do it a different way other than gluing it to her head. But no, I didn't. Spoilers, this looks probably really bad. Be warned. I did it again! God damn it. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, here's me doing it the correct way. Um, never do that. Don't do that. The thing that I just did, don't do it. Do you see how I'm hurting? Stop. So after a bandage and... Uh, <laughs> Just reevaluating my life choices. I'm just trying to make sure that this fits to my yeah. Reevaluate. Yeah. Choices Culture's going through a uh, <laughs> a uh, seam ripping experience, which is never fun. But you know, I feel like that's how you learn to never make mistakes. <laughs> this this is like a flap. I'm gonna like pin this down and then glue it. But otherwise, I'm thinking that this. Shape is okay. Um, it's a little looser than I would have liked, but I think that it will work just fine. So I'm just gonna glue this back part down and then we're gonna put this on a wig head and try and shape it to something else. So out of that foam block that I had, this is how much I put on there. Um, I'm My plan is literally cut it and shape it down. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that the most foam is on there as possible. I'm gonna go buy some more foam, put it on top and see how much I need to take off there or like add. Work in progress. I know it looks like absolute crap, but <laughs> here she is. Hi, I am now at Coulter's place. This is again where I'm at with the <laughs> I put this on and I look crazy. Wait, I'll, I'll, wait, I'll put it on. I'll put... Art. Did somebody mention art? I went to the Joanne 
I got a couple of things, but also this foam. And I'm gonna shape this out and make it more into the, the bumpy, harder shape that I wanted. And that's the key. What is this? I feel like I still need to do some like trimming and stuff and getting some smoother stuff going on here, but I feel like we're kind of on the right track. I feel like we're on the right track. <laughs> Actually, do you know what I look like is that one statue that Raymond's mother makes. She brings it back from her, her abstract art class and everyone tries to make her seem like it. Anyways, I don't know. God. Hi, Jody. Hello. Jody's on the vlog now. I'm on the vlog. You want to be on the vlog? No, no. I'm on the vlog. And I was a. Uh... I'm not gonna tell the story. Do you remember when I was ceased to vlog like every day? Yeah. Ugh, cringe. Okay. Why? Because I just was like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people end up when they're vlogging they want to be on my vlog. I'm down for vlogs. I need to restart my vlog. Well, anyways, I am working on this skirt, and Jody just helped me position this fabric in a very jank way. Sorry, and um, you won't get to see what I did. So basically, I like really went against the grain, but I cut a white underskirt that I'm gonna sew to the in yeah, inside of the dress so that this fabric doesn't show my, my hoo-ha. My no-no bits, if you will. Should we hold up the white fabric? Yeah, there it is. There you go. Opaque. Oh, yeah. And then, oh, the headpiece. Yeah, I, I think I showed you. This is this is my my Star Trek headpiece. It. What is it? It looks like um those aliens from the 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 menagerie. Yeah. So this is my ingenious idea. Hi. Right. So norm you're supposed to cut this bodice piece on the fold. So this is where you cut it on the fold, right? Mm, uh huh. Yeah. And then so instead cutting it on the fold, I was thinking about like sewing in like a panel at the front so that I could like do the like the gathering and stuff. No, I just extended it. So there's all this extra fabric now, and now I can like make it all like ruffly and stuff in the front. Will it look good? Only time will tell. Hi, uh, good morning. So you've already been seeing me like sew some of these pieces. Today I went and got a bagel, settled in um, for a nice long day of sewing and also getting ready for, I have a gig tomorrow. Anyways, 
I'm gonna apologize in advance for all like the shots of my hand that you're gonna see because I have to, you know, use that hand to sell. So I guess I'll try to keep that at a minimum. I'm really embarrassed about how it looks. I'm embarrassed that it happened. A couple of weeks ago, I went out and bought a serger with some money that my grandmother had gotten me for a new sewing machine. I already have a sewing machine. I'm okay with my sewing machine. I have no qualms. Maybe I'll regret this later. Maybe my sewing machine's gonna kaput. Don't you dare. Anyways, I bought a serger. And the nice man at the quilt shop that I bought it from was nice enough to teach me how to thread it. And I have completely forgotten. And yeah, that's my serger. So I guess I'm gonna fiddle around with it and get it to start working. And I got it threaded, so yay for me. It had gotten unthreaded, I guess, and I had tried to start feeding it through with the threading that was already there and it did not work. So I followed the directions, what was in here, which is different than what he had told me to do. I think, because he told me to do it in a different order. Anyways, I got it done and it looks fine. It looks nice. That's that's surging. That's surging, Hanny. Hanny, it's a serger. Hey, yeah, so anyways, that's kind of what we're at. Um, this is kind of a weird pattern. I I'm not exactly sure what it wants me to do next, but I think I'm just gonna go with my instincts and match up all of these, um, all of the corners, ev everything here. Um, I'm gonna have to pleat the bottom the same way that I did with the top so that it, you know, bunches all the way through the, uh, chest and stomach area <laughs> and then yeah it um it seems like they want me to just have the inside of the of the uh sides raw instead of trying to like make a a clean where the zipper would be so i'm going to i think search these these sides together so that that is at least together because this this fabric is already fraying just a little bit. It's kind of like a it's not a very pervasive fray, but it is a kind of a messy looking fray. So we're just gonna be careful about that. Let's see what happens.
Hi everyone. It's been a couple of days since I've actually sat down and worked on this. Keep, things keep getting in the way. I keep having to like, you know, do my taxes and stuff like that. I have had a good think about what I want to do and there's parts of me that say I shouldn't do this, but there's other parts of me that think that if it works, the finished product will look nicer. So as I said before, the problem with this green fabric is that it's very sheer and I can't be having that for a dress, especially on the skirt portion where um, the children might see my underwear. Um, so I'm trying to avoid that. And I bought the lining, I cut out the lining pieces, it was a little harrowing, but I got them and I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unpin this from the pattern and then stitch them like piece to piece together and pretend that they're one piece. I think that the issue with this will be, if there is anything, that the pieces are going to be slightly different sized. And I'm hoping that by serging them together after I stitch them together, I can maybe mitigate some of that. I don't know. But I'm going to do my best. My, I don't want to be in a situation where I am that like the skirt's attached and then like the upper layer looks baggy or something or like everything kind of like scrunches in like turns in and does like a especially since i'm surging everything i want to make sure that um you know not a lot of that is seen the lines are cleaner um that there's not like two skirts that are competing with each other i just think it would look nicer i know i already have surged almost all the sides of one of these skirt pieces but Stay. Yeah. The surging looks nice though. I think it's really nice on this type of fabric because it looks nice and it keeps it from fraying. And this is, this is, this is, this phrase, the phrase. Hi, so you remember that thing that I said might happen? Of course it happened, of course it happened. Um, I don't, <sighs> this kind of thing bothers me because I, I'm glad that I laid it out like this so it was flat so I could figure out that this white layer is actually a little bit longer than the than the outer layer. But geez Louise, like... Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is, um, I don't know. I'm gonna pin it probably where it's at and then I'm gonna use the nice little surging tool. The, you know, there's like a knife on the edge of the serger and I'll use that to cut it off. Hi, okay, so here she is right now. I don't know how I feel about this. I kind of think it's interesting, but I also feel like it just looks like baggy, like frog folds. <laughs> um, I'm wondering, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna let it be. I'm just gonna let it be and let it live. Cause what needs to happen next is after I hem this and also put a zipper in it, I'm gonna be putting flowers on it. Now, I need to kind of do the flowers at the same time as the headpiece. So they, they you know, kind of, work together. I know I want to do some around the the waist here and I want to do like a couple like here but I do not want this to be entirely full of flowers. I just want it to be accented by them. So we will see what that actually translates to. I don't want to do a whole bunch of flowers in one area because the flowers are bulky and that will I think it will end up making everything like me look more bulky than this already does. But yeah, I, I switched to this uh, mannequin because um, this dress is a little tight on me and I knew that was gonna be the case going in because I did it, the, the size that I had cut out of this pattern was the size that I was when I was in college. <laughs> so it's, it's fine, it fits, it fits. All 
right, she's done. So I hemmed the bottom. It looks nice on me. It's fine, it's cute, it's nice. Okay, so my plan of attack for this is before I start putting, it's not even the front. Oh God, okay. Before I start putting flowers on this, I am going to start putting flowers on this because I feel like I want this to tie into the dress. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna be taking, see this is the kind of flowers I've been holding on for years to. I'm gonna just start putting them all over. I like to really densely pack them so that you're not seeing any of the stuff underneath, but I want it to look really fully packed and beautiful and voluminous. And yeah, it's gonna be a lot of glue and a lot of gluing. So that's the tea. So I think I forgot to say I had I have this whole box of flowers <laughs> that are left over from a, another project that I did years ago. But I did go, when I went to the dollar store to get the um, the towel, this, this head towel, I did go into the flower section. I bought some more flowers because I just wanted some more just like different little ones. So yeah, I just, I just pull off all this stuff and I save the leaves. I have a whole bag of leaves. <laughs> It's very fun. And yeah, I get rid of the stones because I mean, it is straight up wire, but I don't really know what to do with it. It's a lot of stems. Hi, so yeah, uh, the process is very slow going, but you can tell that I've done quite a bit to just like here. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm putting um, smaller flowers down here in the crease so that the whole exaggeration, you know, stays there instead of, you know, I spend a lot of time carving out the shape that I want to tone and make sure that my flower placement works for that. I don't know why I was so worried about like <laughs> making sure that it was all even because the flowers completely obscure that, but whatever. Hi, so it's Tuesday before reading time and I'm just like plugging away at this. I guess I forgot how long it takes. I don't know. Um, I got all that section done. So I guess that's quite a bit. I think I'm underselling myself how much work I've done, but that's two days of work. And I still have all of this to go, all of this, all of this, all of this, all of this, all of this. And I still need to address the dress which I should probably be putting aside some flowers for because I want it to fit together. I'm noticing a lot of stuff in this flower bin is like, like I don't, I can't use too much of this. Um, this is a lot, you know, really little stuff. Um, and then also really big stuff that I can't really use. I could probably use this on the dress, but I would also need to put it, I don't know. So I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm a little worried, honestly. 
if I had to say at this moment, I'm a little worried. I might switch to the dress so that I can just make sure that I have some flowers reserved for that and then come back to this so I can finish out the rest. Um, and the, re the when it gets down to the bottom, I might just start using really little flowers, which will take longer, but that's what I'm gonna have left, so. Mm. Alrighty, hi. I uh, just got back to the gym, I ate, I showered while I was there, which is why my hair is so fluffy. Okay, trying to still figure out what I wanna do with this. I think in my head, I was wanting to put like flowers like here and that kind of come up this way or like down that way. So there's like a little accent and then like here maybe. But I don't know if that's gonna look weird. I just don't wanna do this thing because I saw this dress the other day that was made out of unconventional materials and it just, everything was placed in a very obvious spot. So like the waist made it look like a belt and also makes you look like wider. I don't wanna do that. Um, or like around the neck, like that's a very obvious place to do it. I don't really want to do that. I want things to look like wild and free on this. Yeah, so that'll be my plan of attack though, is that I'll have like maybe like a really concentrated area and then it'll, you know, as it goes down, maybe there'll be like flowers down on the skirt. That way I don't have to put anything on the back necessarily um, because that's not very fun to sit down on. Um, but then I can also keep stuff, some stuff on the skirt so that it all ties in together. So it's not just like the front. <laughs> the dress is the only fun part. Hi, it's um, Wednesday. I need to have this done by way before Saturday morning, obviously, but that's when the event is. One thing that I forgot that I had done when I had made dresses like this before is that I bought all the flowers, but then I separated them. They've all been mixed together in a single box. And now I totally sorted them, which this is so beautiful looking, right? You would think that this is enough to put on that headpiece, but I'm worried about it for some reason still. <laughs> but I think by having them sorted, it is going to help me figure out how much I have of what, how I need to distribute it, make it still look pretty, etc., etc. Okay, also, I finished the dress. That's the back. That's the less. I said I was not going to do much to the back. I did some stuff to this side on the back. That's what this ended up looking like. I don't know if I, I don't know if my, it's my favorite dress pl placement, but I think it does the job. And I think when it's paired with the headdress, it will look even better. There's my sad sewing machine. <sighs> so it'll, it'll all tie together. Also, I took some of this stuff. Boop. Um, this is the stuff that I use for my Shania Twain hat. <laughs> and I just kind of like gave it a light coating. So you might see some of the sparkles in there. Yeah, added me. Look at that, pretty. There's just like little tiny spots left. Little tiny spots. Sorry, I haven't been filming this whole thing. So there's like two spots. I've been going back and forth. I don't know why I don't just like stick on one side. Anyways, ugh.
I love it. It looks beautiful. It makes me happy. This is everything I ever wanted. Um, right. You know what? I was thinking about this. So this is very much, this is Priscilla Queen of the Desert inspired primarily. But also I think that there's this like Pokemon. I haven't played the game that the Pokemon's part of. Excuse my cold sore. Yeah, I've had a cold sore this entire evening. Um, there's this Pokemon that has like these little things that like come down. What is that Pokemon's name? Anyways, that's inspiration too. And then, but also I was thinking there was this cute little movie called Midsummer that everybody was talking about. And there's, there's like this smiling uh, picture of like a girl with it. She, I look kind of like her, right? Yeah, I should, I should watch that movie sometime. Already fam, and then things got busy. So here's the reveal, woo! Okay. Alrighty, and this is the final look. I can't, this is it. This is what you're gonna get. <laughs> I didn't do the little thing where I do that thing, but um, you know, I, I was really tired. Yeah, the dress ended up pretty nice. I like doing this. I'll insert some uh, videos of, of reading time. That's Editor Joe's note. And yeah, you'll be able to see this in more dynamic fashion. You guys saw me a little bit at the store. We just got back. We're about to film Gruff Corner. It's, oh. I had such a fun time. I had such a fun time doing green time in person again, and I think this was a wonderful outfit to christen that way. Awesome, look at my makeup. Ooh, look at her. This is kimchi, uh, kimchi beauty glitter. So that's good. You're not, which you're not supposed to put on your eyes, but hi, hi. <laughs> okay, I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, be safe and make good choices. And also be fabulous. Bye, bye.